Okay, so do you remember in the collection tour when I was like, hey, there's a problem with this video, I hope no one notices it, and I'm not going to tell you what it is so you don't go looking for it? I suppose good news on that front. No one did notice. But my camera developed a dead pixel, which I think I fixed now, hopefully, and it won't pop up again just to screw with me. Anyways, that was a huge gut-wrenching issue to me, because even though I was the only one who knew about it, I'm a perfectionist, and I'd rather rip out my own teeth than knowingly make an imperfect video from the outset. Which is why this was delayed until now, when I wanted to do this over a week ago. Anyways, the channel's three-year anniversary is coming up on August 8th. So, in order to try and hit 14k subscribers by then, your likes! Please give. And if you enjoyed this video by the end, please consider subscribing. And I'm not even going to play right now. You can shut this review off in a couple seconds because you will already know my recommendation. This is an amazing deluxe class Optimus Prime being sold as a Voyager. Why does this keep happening? I mean, look at him. He's so teeny tiny and he's got so little paint. How are you selling this for Voyager price? Well, I mean, I say so little paint, but like 95% of this thing is made out of tool room gray and almost everything that got color is painted. But ignoring that, where the fuck did the budget go? Because again, he is so very small. His head is dinky AF, his shoulders are really pretty ugly, his hands look weird, his gun, which we aren't talking about yet, seems like it's off a different, much less detailed toy, his ankles are weak as hell, and that's where the negatives end because this thing fucking rules. For starters, I think with a little more color in the waist to make it all pop, this dude would look a lot cooler than he did in the movie he's from. In Rise of the Beasts, he looked like the Bumblebee Optimus Prime, but just kind of generally worse in most ways, with weaker colors and nothing to really differentiate him except for his titty eyebrows. This has harsher angles, it's squarer, which is good, don't at me. He's leggy, but like in an appealing way, they don't look too long, but they do look powerful. He's got rectangular feet, which I absolutely love when compared to the teardrop-shaped ones he had in both Rise of the Beasts and Bumblebee. He does what I always said they should have done with Siege Prime and made the baggy sleeves more like baggy shirt cuffs, and yes, this does have the Earthrise rubber butt cheeks, and yes, it's okay here because they fit the design aesthetic. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, having a perfectly clean design with one nasty piece of kibble is a lot more distracting than being generally kibbly all over. Look at Ryan Reynolds with a broken nose versus Danny Trejo with a broken nose. I mean, no disrespect to Danny Trejo, but one of these is a lot less attention grabbing. Also, what's pretty cool is that if you want, you can use his smokestacks to make like a jet prime mode. And what's funny about that is that you'd really think this would impair his arm range since you're covering up the slots specifically put there to get his arms out to the side. But it's actually not terrible like this. You still get like 70% of the movement out of them. I have seen figures where there should be nothing stopping them and they still don't have this range. Looking at you, Gamer Edition Barricade. So this is a cool option that leads into a distinct design for the character, with little to no downsides, considering that if you do need to pose this, you can just pop open the shoulder panel again. The head is probably the worst part of the figure. It's baby-sized, feeling small even for this deluxe class body. Worse still is that the detail on it is kind of soft. I almost want to say it's goopy looking. And then, two videos in a row where I get to shit on light piping, but it's not my birthday! This is the most classic example of this shitty gimmick. It does basically nothing, and the eyes are dead and lifeless no matter how far you deposit his head of the colon of a light bulb. This absolutely does not ruin the look of this figure, but it could have been a lot better. So yeah, this thing looks great, and it feels pretty good. The only bother is the ankles being so weak, but that's partially because they're like on three stacked joints one on top of the other. And man, this really should have been bigger. For the price we're paying, I don't get why it's so small. And then the one accessory ain't great. Don't get me wrong, I love that this is a gun rather than an awful gun hand, or the worse than ever washing machines they taped to their arms in that movie, but like... It's light, it feels cheap, the details are washed out on it, as not only did they not bother to sculpt this very much, but it's also like the plastic they used is eating up the sculpt. Once again, like with the rest of the figure, it's too small, it just has no balls, especially when they already had a great version of this exact gun that came with the Bumblebee figure. And that thing was like twice the size of this while being a hundred times cooler. I'll take this, I'm happy to have it when compared to the shitty alternative, but we've gotten better for the same gun before. And you know what this doesn't come with? A Matrix, thank god hallelujah! I didn't need another one for the cereal bowl! Start your mornings off right, with Matrix O's! Unicron loved them so much he exploded. As for posability, holy shit this thing rules! The one bad joint is the head, it basically only swivels but you can fake some down on it. Shoulders pull significantly more than a 90, and if you rotate the pauldron and let the plate up at the back, then you get what I might have to call maximum backwards butterflies. Massively more than 90 elbows going almost maximum, wrist swiv and narcissists on the hand joint that I was recently so complimentary of. Extreme ab crunch, hips are unimpeded forward and to the side and barely impeded going back, slightly more than 90 knees, which you can cheat for even further, and feet with a massive toe down, what has to be a maximum toe up, and a serious rocker 
in both directions. So for the second review in a row, we have a regular Chug figure that has dared to venture into the realms of the better third party and masterpiece levels of posability. The head is slightly below average, but then everything else is either above average or massively above average, with a good few specialty joints. This guy can be put into almost any pose that you can imagine. Absolutely one of the hands down best posing Chugs of all time, probably even beating the Dreadwing we just covered last time. And then unlike that thing, this doesn't stop winning just because we got into the transformation, as that little bit is awesome. This is fun, fast, intuitive, and remarkably unique. The butt plate works exactly the same way as it did on the Earthrise Prime, but unlike that thing, this guy's legs actually transform. And then it's doing a few things that I've never seen done with an upper torso, not the least of which being that the arms are kind of bent in a really weird way that's then covered up by these odd go faster flaps. And then the end result is this mean looking little brick of a thing. I love this alt mode. It kind of gives me siege vibes. Also Combiner Wars ones as well. You know me, I like squares. And this might be the squarest Optimus we've ever had. As I know Optimus's crotch hanging off the back can be a bit of a deal breaker for some people, here those parts are sucked all the way up into basically the insides of his wheel wells. And then the feet are being used to disguise the tops of his shins, so this has a very different profile than most Optimi. Now I can't prove it since I seem to have misplaced it somewhere, but I do not believe that this will fit the Earthrise Optimus's trailer since the bed of his truck mode is so much taller than that older figure, which I can no longer seem to get to peg into his wheel wells anymore, despite me remembering them having a very satisfying snap to them back when. Can anyone else confirm if this has happened to theirs over time? How have I never seen anyone do a meme where Earthrise Optimus does this? Anyways, the hitch right now I think is only useful for pegging in his gun, which, now thinking back on it, was that supposed to be a thing in the movie? For like half a second, Optimus had a jet engine in his truck mode. Was that the vestigial remains of this gimmick? Anyways, I'll be the first to admit this alt mode doesn't look perfect at all. It's very toy, but it's got a lot of charm in that. I think it's a lot cooler than most Optimus designs in this mode, even when compared to the Bumblebee one. And holy hell does this thing roll great! Absolutely one of the best figures I own in this regard. Damn thing feels like it's been handed down to us on greased rollers by a divine intellect. So this is a great alt mode. It looks cool, it holds together better than most like this, it's unique having quite an identity and presence, I love it like this. And I love it in its robot mode too, because this thing is just awesome as a deluxe. I cannot stress this enough. This is blatantly a deluxe Optimus Prime being put into the Voyager price point because Optimuses are always in the bigger price points. It's the size of a deluxe, it's got the paint and sculpting of a deluxe, the transformation while fun, interesting, and unique is something that absolutely could and would be done in a deluxe budget. The only leg this has to stand on that it's more than that is the amazing posing. And granted, it does have that, but I don't really see that as impossible on a deluxe budget either. But honestly, I really ain't mad about paying Voyager price. Is this a deluxe that they are charging the next size class up for with no real justification? Like not even the hot Rodimus, we included a ton of accessories, trick? Sure, but this is a badass deluxe. When the toy is this good and fun, I really can't muster up all that much energy to be angry at it for overcharging. Would I like this even more if it were the right price? Very likely. But at the same time, I can't say for sure, and I'd also probably be happier playing Voyager if this was a bit bigger, cause why is he this scale in the first place? Like, did they shrink him and keep shrinking him to try and make it fit the Earthrise's trailer, only for them to give up halfway through when they realized how tiny this would have to become to fit that, and then they just didn't remember to hit the undo button after that? Look, in any event, I don't know that I can say this is a Micro Masterpiece. It looks very little like the version of the character that it's trying to portray. And Micro Masterpiece doesn't necessarily mean the best of the best, it means a specific kind of best. Which, this just isn't accurate enough to be. However, this is still basically as good as it gets. It may not look right, but it's a hell of a good toy, and this gets my full recommendation. I love it, buy it, you won't regret it. Even if it is a little pricey. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.